This episode of the Local Hustlers podcast is brought to you by Flamingo Pools, your go-to maintenance and repair company in the East Valley. Stop wasting your valuable time trying to take care of your pool and let the professionals at Flamingo Pools take care of it for you. Visit azflamingopools.com for a free quote today. You're listening to the Local Hustlers Podcast, East Valley Locals. Get connected with small businesses near you and dive deep into their stories, mindset, and motives. Entrepreneurs everywhere. Get ready to be inspired by business owners, entrepreneurs, and hustlers that you can relate to and learn from. And now, your hosts, Dallin Huso and Ridge Waldberg. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Local Hustlers podcast. Uh, today, Ridge and I are super excited to be here with Braden Archinuk of Archie Film Co. Uh, now, if, right. that, if that last name sounds a bit familiar, we've actually had Braden's sister on the show mm-hmm. uh, in the past, so we've got a family of entrepreneurs here. That's right. Uh, excited to see who has the better interviews. So. <laughs> <laughs> Probably her. How's it, how's it going, man? It's going, it's going well. Um, just been chilling here. Um, oh, nice past few months have been crazy but yeah i think for everyone it's been like that so (laughs) for sure well yeah i'm sure we'll dive into um how that's kind of affected you and your business um before we get into all that though why don't you take a couple of minutes uh give us a quick background story on you and your life before you got into the business world yeah so similar to my sister um i was born in canada um and I lived there for about eight years, and then as a child, we moved to Arizona mm-hmm. here. And I kind of just grew up in the Chandler and Gilbert area, um, going to school. And I never really, well, back when I was a child, uh, this leads into why I do what I yeah. do. Mm-hmm. My brother and I used to make like little movies yeah. i think a lot of people have that similar experience oh yeah me and rich had our, <laughs> oh, had our we, stint of yeah. movie making we yeah had our movie making days it's fun especially with like the surge of youtube back in the day oh, yeah. yeah when yeah. it first came out i think um i was super interested in making little movies so my brother taught me the fundamentals of like editing uh-huh and we would make those and then i kind of just kept editing and editing i think i started <clears throat> doing my own editing when I was like in seventh grade Um, and I'm 21 now so that was um, a few years ago and I wanted to make my own YouTube channel Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I got a GoPro and my first idea was to create a YouTube channel called first person um, experiences or something like that where I would show like roller coaster rides with the GoPro or skateboarding even though i didn't like any of those things (laughs) so it dissipated pretty quickly yeah and then on to high school like i uh every time a video project would come up i would be the first one to be excited about it yeah and not gonna lie i made some really good (laughs) video projects (laughs) for like my age and the teachers always gave me like straight a's because of those projects so that's when I knew that I really loved um, doing video work and yeah. filming and editing. So that's awesome. I don't and know if that was too much, but <laughs> no, 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 that was perfect. Yeah. That was perfect. And then, do you go to school, or are you just doing the business full time? Yeah. So right now, I'm going to ASU okay. for film, studying film um, and media production. I'm hoping to study specifically cinematography and editing which is what I prefer to do. Right. Um, ASU, the film program at ASU is more geared towards like Hollywood production. Uh Uh-huh. Versus? Versus like uh, doing your own thing, like weddings and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. So um, I'm still trying to decide if I want to go down that route, but for now I like what I'm doing. So, yeah. Do do most photographers and videographers go to school to learn all the tips and tricks, or do a lot of them like figure it out on their own? No, I don't. I don't think a lot actually even go. And to be fair, you don't really have to. Uh-huh. Um, with all the resources that we have right, right. as a society, yeah. like YouTube, Skillshare, all of those online like skill sharing websites, uh-huh. I honestly don't believe that 
people really have to go to school for that. Yeah. Um, the reason I'm going is so that I have a degree in case something happens and I'm yeah. not able to work for myself. Um, I have that backup, yeah. and also <clears throat> I'm learning um, like the technical skills behind cameras and lighting, mm-hmm. and that's what I really want to learn so that I can um, develop better uh, video production skills yeah. and uh, videos for uh, businesses and mm-hmm. um, weddings and stuff like yeah. that. So. so you are going for the degree part of it as yeah. well as the education? Of course. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, and how is that going so far? Do you enjoy going to school? Yeah, actually, uh, I love ASU. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I think it's a great school. Um, I've loved learning more about film huh. because you know I'm a, I, I love to watch films and movies, um, but the film degree there's specific classes. It's mm-hmm. a lot better than high school because you're able to take classes that are you know, geared towards what you want to learn. Right. And I love that about um, university. It's like the best thing. That's cool. Yeah. Um, you mentioned a program that I've actually never heard of. It's just called Skillshare. Mm-hmm. What What is that exactly? So I just found it actually. Skillshare is uh, a website and it's a yearly, it could be a yearly or monthly subscription, but yearly is only like a hundred bucks. And they have... Um, hundreds and hundreds of tutorials uh, to learn Um, it's mainly like art based so like um, there's video production editing drawing there's also like photography um, graphic design but they also have like how to grow your business through Instagram gotcha and other business growing uh, tools like that and they're just uh, tutorials basically and it's really awesome I just found it so I'm excited to dive into that even That's cool. more. But That's sweet. Yeah. yeah. Have you started doing that yet? I just started whining about growing business through Instagram. Okay. That's and cool. it's been it's been pretty interesting. Yeah. I've already applied some tips, so yeah. Any any that you want to share with the audience? Oh my goodness. I think Instagram growing your business through Instagram is one of the, the most daunting tasks. Oh, for sure. Um for any small business owner. Mm-hmm. Um Especially for me, because what I'm more interested in is uh, filming weddings, mm-hmm. and um, I've been getting a lot of work through, um, or getting a lot of work, uh, yeah, through Instagram. And so, a lot of people think that you have to have a lot of followers to get a lot of business, right. but that's not necessarily true. Um, you have to kind of gear your Instagram towards getting customers, providing discounts, uh, showing your work and how they can actually buy and use your work um, to benefit their lives. For sure. And so for video production, it's a little different. I have to kind of like sell them on the idea that they're going to get something emotional and beautiful that they'll be able to, you know, keep for their whole lives. So it's been fun. I really like Instagram and um, kind of marketing through it. So, mm-hmm. that's cool. do you feel like the majority of your business comes through Instagram? Yeah, I'd say so. Well, you know what? I'd say Instagram is a big part because they want to see a portfolio, and a lot of people don't like to go on the website, mm-hmm. so they'll just check Instagram. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's a lot quicker. We've talked about it. Instagram's kind of like a new website mm-hmm. in a lot of way. Like people yeah. will check your Instagram for your credibility yeah. more yeah. than mm-hmm. they check a website mm-hmm. these days. Mm-hmm. And I've, I mean, I've tried to find photographer wedding photographers and videographers through instagram as well Mm -hmm. and it's worked so um that's one thing but i think the biggest business um provider i should say is just referrals okay that's probably the best way that i've gotten um most of my business it's just one business hiring me to film a promotional video and then them recommending me to another business a local business and then another and another and you know they have to like my work enough to hire me so. right yeah, yeah it's important that you do a yeah. good job but if one person refers you then you know that person trusts yeah you so it's kind of you know the same thing like <laughs> yeah you build yeah. confidence right, both ways for sure. so. yeah no yeah referrals are huge mm-hmm. um 
talk to me about so you and your sister are both entrepreneurs is that is it just the two of you are there other members of your family or people that you guys you know have in your lives that are entrepreneurs yeah so my family my dad is an entrepreneur he wasn't always he started his business about 10 years ago Uh and his business is very specific he works up north in canada oh um, with software I'm not going to get into the details of it because it's, you know, intricate, but (laughs) software is always, yeah, software. That's all you really need to know. Um, but my sister actually started her business first. My brother, I have a brother as well. He's the oldest, but Mm -hmm. he went to ASU, got a degree and he works, um, kind of more of the nine to five job, um, Mm -hmm. doing software as well. And so it's just basically my sister, me and uh, my dad uh, mm-hmm. mainly does the entrepreneurship. So. Yeah. That's cool. And I'm learning a lot from them. Yeah. Um, I think the number one thing that they've said is just fail. You know, you have to fail. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I've been <laughs> learning the, this past year um, is that you have to fail a lot and make a lot of mistakes. For sure. So. so are they kind of a big reason why you wanted to be an entrepreneur or was there other motivating factors too? Yeah, a few years ago, I was kind of considering, I was kind of thinking about what I wanted to do as a career, um, because in high school, they kind of push that on yeah. you, um, <laughs> and I was taking a few science classes and medical classes, and I'm really interested in anatomy, and it, okay. you know, I wanted to do that, but my dad kind of told me that if I have a skill, I should use it, mm-hmm. you know, and there's no point in learning another one. Uh, I mean, there is, you know, obviously you should learn a lot of skills, but if you have one that you're good at, you should capitalize Capitalize on it. it. And so he kind of geared me, pushed me in that direction and said that going to ASU will, you know, kind of help me refine those skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so through basically my dad's influence, I was able to, you know, start doing my own thing. And then my sister has helped me a lot with the Instagram Mm kind of marketing and kind of being more personable because yeah. yeah. that's kind of what she has to do for her business. Yeah. So I have like the technical side with my dad and like the more personal yeah, you side the best with of my both worlds. Yeah. Sister, so. That's sweet. Yeah. That's awesome. Helps a lot. It's definitely a good benefit. Um, so, so tell me this, do you consider yourself more of like an entrepreneur or a filmmaker? So the term filmmaker gets thrown around quite a bit nowadays, I think. Um, with good reason, I, I'm not sure. I think a lot of Hollywood, um, professionals would kind of frown upon anybody else calling themselves a filmmaker. <laughs> oh, I used a trigger <laughs> word. But at the trigger same time, on. I honestly don't want to limit anyone and their dreams. I would probably consider myself more of a, a business than a filmmaker. Uh-huh. Um, just because... I feel like to make a film, it's a lot more organized. It's on a set, you know. You have professional cameras, lighting, professionals. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think anybody should and should be able to call themselves a filmmaker if they want to. Yeah. I just want to lean probably more towards the business side. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I feel like for now, that's what I've been doing. It's more business, like commercial videos. Also, like, wedding videos, and I feel like that's more, you know, business than, you know, being a filmmaker. So yeah. That's, that's just my opinion. Um, what, I guess, like, on the, the top of being, like, an entrepreneur versus, like, just doing film and videography, what what made you decide that you wanted to, like, go your own route and start your own business around it rather than, like, okay, I love film, I'll just work <laughs> for someone else and do that? That's a good one. So... My uncle actually works in Hollywood. Um, He's a director, and he directs commercials, music videos, and is working on some films right Mm -hmm. now. And so he's been a big influence on, like, he's brought me out to Hollywood to see how it works and to help him out, kind of be a personal assistant. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. But as I've gone to the university, or to ASU, We've had to make a few films, and the way they, I mean, they've been teaching that it has to be very professional, has to be on a set, the lighting has to be, you know, perfect. 
And as I've been practicing making films with my friends, obviously it's not perfect and it's not professional, but I've kind of realized that I like to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I feel stressed out on a film set um, personally because I feel like it's very strict and I want to have my own creativity and I don't want to limit myself on my own creativity. And I also think that it's very important to have imperfections in terms of your work and in terms of art. Mm-hmm. Because if art was perfect, it wouldn't be, you know, creative. Hmm. Yeah. And so I think that the fact that I do it myself kind of brings a level of imperfection that makes it unique. Mm-hmm. And I think that I want people to know that, like, if you want to do your own thing, um, that's okay. You know, you yeah. don't have to work in a Hollywood set to mm-hmm. make movies. And I've heard that many times. Yeah. That you know, the market's so big now yeah. that you can do your own thing and still be successful. So, hmm. yeah. That's a super interesting point. So, yeah. yeah. That's cool. And it sounds like you've really focused on, like, two things, obviously, like, promotional videos and stuff like that and then weddings. <laughs> why why those two things versus, like, a movie or something else? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I think, well, when I first started my business, my first customer was basically... Amanda, my sister, mm-hmm. with Cozy Knit. Mm-hmm. Those videos were awful. I'm not going to lie. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> I was practicing. Yeah. She still paid me, though. Um, but those videos, she referred me to a friend of hers. Mm-hmm. And the thing about getting into those markets is that you kind of just get referred into them. Mm-hmm. And then you start doing them. And people see that work and they want more. Other businesses want that. So basically... If, as of now, I've only gotten into, you know, promotional videos for businesses and weddings. Yeah. Um, personally, out of those two, I love weddings because they're, I can do, I can be creative and I can do my own thing. Right. Yeah. I would also love to dive into the real estate, you know, videography oh, yeah. and photography cool, yeah. market. I uh-huh. just haven't had the opportunity yeah. um, to get hired for one of those jobs. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It wouldn't be hard. I could go on Craigslist. Yeah. There's a lot of listings for like videographer needed. Um, but I'm just pretty busy with what I'm doing right now. That's good. I like it. So, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. may as well just keep doing that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you mentioned you, <clears throat> you kind of originally got into film by like filming like creative movies, I guess. Do you have any desire to kind of do more of that in the future? Or are you focusing more on like the, like the promotional and wedding side of things? So, I'm still trying to decide. Um, I think for now, what I've set my mind on is uh, doing my own business, running my own business, and filming my own promotional and wedding videos. Mm -hmm. Because it's brought me a lot of joy in the past year to see my work and to see people actually like my work um, on a face-to-face basis. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, The wedding, or sorry, the movie industry is a very tight-knit industry, and it takes a lot to get into it. Yeah. And I'm not saying that I couldn't, but it would take a lot of time and dedication, and I don't think I have that right now. Yeah. And I'd rather just get through school and run my own business. Mm -hmm. So I think after going to ASU um, in three years, I'll have a better um, kind of mindset of what I want to do for the future. Right. But for now, I, I'm going to stick to what I'm doing because I actually really love it. So cool. Yeah. That's um, there's obviously a lot of videographers out there. So what do you do to, I guess, stand out and help people pick, especially being, you know, kind of newer to the industry and a younger person, how do you get someone to pick you versus someone that's, you know, a lot more seasoned, has a lot more experience? There's a lot of videographers in my area, mm-hmm. and I, I even admit there are better videographers my age that live here, but the great thing is that we all have our own specific skills and, and um, styles. Yeah. So... 
the way I try to stand out is that I go for a bit more uh, cinematic, but that means slower, darker tones in mm. my videos. Mm -hmm. That's specifically for wedding videos. Mm -hmm. um, I think that makes me stand out because yeah. I've seen a lot of wedding videos and they're a lot more upbeat, fun, yeah. and that's okay. I just prefer to go with the more emotional route. Right. Another thing is that since I'm starting out, my prices aren't extremely overpriced. Right. Yeah. I charge um, a decent amount, but it's quite low compared to professional companies. Mm -hmm. And so that makes me stand out a lot because I have high quality work for cheap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that that's a good thing because you should <laughs> always price your stuff um, to the quality of work you're providing. Right. Yeah. But since I only have one year of running my own business experience, mm -hmm. I want to keep my prices at the level that I believe I am. For yeah. sure. And once I have more levels of experience and more skills, I'll raise my prices. But right. for yeah. now, a lot of businesses obviously want to spend less money right. to promote their stuff. And so they'll hire me because I don't, charge a ton so yeah. yeah that's cool no i think that's a really good point because like people can be not just in this industry but there's so many industries where you feel like it's saturated mm -hmm. um but there's also so many consumers that have different styles and different tastes so not only like you mentioned there's different sort of styles that you use versus someone else um but the, just the price factor how like there's some people that you know have a ton of money to spend and they're not going to risk a newer guy and they want the most expensive person because he's gonna do the best job but then there's also newer businesses or you know people with weddings that don't have an as much money to spend and they're willing to you know take a chance on someone with not as much experience but that's a lot more reasonably priced yep. so mm -hmm. always a way to get in yep yeah, that's exactly true. do you spend more time cleaning your pool than you spend swimming in it then call flamingo pools today flamingo pools is your go-to swimming pool maintenance and repair company in the east valley whether it's weekly maintenance repairs green to cleans or one-time cleanings flamingo pools will take care of you Honest, reliable, and innovative. Just a few of the many good things Flamingo Pools customers have to say about them. Ask them about their mineral treatment, which will keep your chemical levels down, allowing you to have a healthier bathing experience. At Flamingo Pools, they know that your pool was made to be enjoyed, so let them handle the rest. Check them out at azflamingopools.com or give them a call at 480-422-6013. Mention this podcast and you'll get your first month of maintenance completely free. That's azflamingopools.com and 480-422-6013. Well, and you've talked a lot about like the filming and the editing. Um, kind of like run us through like the process. So like you'll show up to a wedding or you show up to a promotional video. Kind of like what's the process like from the beginning to the end? Mm -hmm. So... Let's say for say for uh, promotional videos, basically the, the business or the client reaches out to me and asks me, tells me that they want to do a specific video, mm -hmm. and so I charge per I charge per hour for on location shooting. Mm -hmm. So they'll invite me to a location and I'll shoot whatever they want me to, um, and I'll. Uh, Afterwards, I'll go home and I also charge, so I'll, I charge a shooting fee and I charge an editing fee based on how long of a video they want. And I'll probably change that up in the future yeah. just because I need to learn, I need to like figure out what is going to work the best, but for now it's working. And so usually they'll ask me to edit it how I think I should, you know, mm -hmm. they like my work, so they want my creativity mm -hmm. right. and they don't know a lot of about, they don't know a lot about editing, but I do. Mm -hmm. So they'll ask me to do it mm -hmm. and then I'll send them over, send the video over and they'll ask me to change a few things if they want it changed. Yeah. And usually it takes a few revisions to get what they were yeah. imagining in their mm -hmm. heads. So, yeah. yeah. Is that hard to like, because everyone in their head has like exactly what they want. Is it hard to like extract oh, yeah. that and make sure that that's what you get? Oh yeah. When a business tells me, just do whatever you think you should in terms <laughs> of editing, there's so many possibilities 
And usually when they ask me to do that, they're imagining something completely different. Right. Wow. And so I can't work like that because I'm wasting time sometimes when they ask me to be creative and then they want something completely different. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I'll actually do this instead. Yeah. So I prefer a business tell me or a person tell me up front what they want. That way I can use that and kind of add my own editing style or taste onto that. But usually the business likes the edit that I do yeah. and they think it's really good because they're not that knowledgeable in terms of video production. Right. And usually they've never done one um, with someone who knows what they're doing. So um, yeah, it can go either way. Mm-hmm. And for weddings, I usually just do my own thing, show up and film. And uh, usually brides and grooms don't ask for edits. Maybe they don't like a song, which is mm-hmm. completely understandable. They're paying yeah. good money mm-hmm. to be able to have their video, so I'll yeah. change it. But I'm a little more creative when it comes to those uh, weddings. So yeah. yeah, sounds like there's a lot that goes on like after the camera's put down. It sounds like there's almost more sometimes in terms of editing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say editing is a huge factor um, because if the editing doesn't flow especially with the music, Uh it just feels off and like the audience can tell it's just off. Uh I don't, it's more of like a subconscious or kind of a, a mental thing, but we can always tell when something just doesn't feel right. Right. Um, and so it, it takes a lot of work to be able to perfect like a good edit. I believe it. Mm -hmm. What, what do you like better? Do you like the filming part or the editing? Probably the filming part. Mm -hmm. Um, The editing takes a long time. And if the client is, wants something very specific, it's going to take a long time Mm -hmm. to kind of perfect that edit. Yeah. Um, But I prefer to be out and about getting shots that Mm -hmm. I really like so that afterwards I have more freedom um, to edit and to make those shots even better. So. Is there, there might not be an answer to this, but do you, in your opinion, do you think there's one that's more important than the other, the filming versus the editing? It depends on who your audience is, because personally, I've seen a lot of wedding videos that the camera quality isn't the best, Mm -hmm. um, which is okay. You know, people have their own cameras, they have their own style. Yeah. But... As someone who's, you know, studying that and knows what a 4K camera looks versus a 1080p camera. Versus an iPhone. Yeah, Yeah, versus an iPhone. It's very, to me, it's very important, (laughs) right? A lot of audience members, a lot of people in general do not know the difference between quality um, in terms of cameras. Uh So in that sense, I think editing is more important Mm. because a lot of people like, I think it's surged, it's um, kind of exploded in the past few years that people love watching like travel videos. Yeah. Yeah. Fun, like high energy drone shots, like uh, travel videos. And people love it because it's like fun and it makes them want to do that. Right, 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 yeah. And so I think that editing style is very important because that's what captivates most of the people who are on Instagram. Yeah. Which leaves me at a disadvantage because I kind of hate it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of don't like that because to me it's, you know, those travel videos, it's your opinion, but to me they're kind of superficial. Yeah. Because travel is not like that, you know, travel is tough and it's hard and, yeah. you know, I've traveled for my job and it's not, you know, it's not glorious sleeping <laughs> yeah. in an airport. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I think editing is very important to kind of captivate your audiences. That's why I always catch Ridge watching wedding videos. Yeah. (laughs) Getting all psyched up about it. I don't know why. They just always seem to get me. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. I like the emotional Mm -hmm. sort of ones too. So it's kind of, yeah, we'll talk about something else before I, you know. (laughs) Um, So you mentioned your dad and your sister. Do you have any other mentors in your life? Either, you know, someone you know or someone in the business world that you look, look to for advice? So... Honestly, yeah, so I mentioned my uncle. Um, That's right. 
His name is Kenlin, Kenlin Clark. So he has kind of taught me a few things about the, uh, Hollywood productions, uh-huh. and he's brought me out to one of his productions. Uh, he's worked with uh, producer Adi Shankar. He was a producer of Judge Dredd, oh, wow. the new one, and I think The Lone Survivor. Oh, wow. So he's done quite a few um, producing projects. And so my uncle has won a few kind of competitions in terms of screenwriting. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so he's been able to make his uh, make some short films and stuff. Yeah. And he's also worked on um, some music videos for Above and Beyond. He, they're uh, an EDM group. Oh. Not a lot of people here know them, but they're super big in Europe. And <laughs> okay. I actually knew them before he started working with them. That's cool. So he's been a huge help because he kind of knows my struggles mm-hmm. because he's been through kind of the the wedding or you know the trying to make your own films yeah. as a yeah. low budget filmmaker yeah yeah um so he's helped me a lot and he's probably the only one in terms of filmmaking that has inspired me mm-hmm. my dad and my sister are huge helps in the business side yeah mm-hmm. but yeah that's about it nice mm-hmm. um Tell me a two-part question. So what is your favorite and least favorite part of running your own business? Oh, hmm. Let me think about that one. I think my favorite part of running my own business is running my own business. <laughs> and you know that sounds like a dumb answer. But having the creativity and control over what you produce is yeah. probably the best thing. Is the most freeing thing I think most business owners can um, agree to that, that when you run your own business, you don't have to answer to anyone, really. Um, You don't have to work um, specific hours. Mm -hmm. You kind of do your own thing, and you have creative control over what you do. So that's been a lot of fun, and so I think that's my favorite part. And my least favorite part about running my own business is starting (laughs) and uh i think everyone just needs to start if they have an idea that's probably the best way to you know that's the only way to get rolling Mm -hmm. but the start has been hard due to the pandemic and so it's like i want to be better i want to get more you know clients wedding clients business clients but due to the pandemic you know everything's kind of slowed down Mm -hmm. And I've gotten enough work to keep me going, and mm-hmm. I'm very grateful for that. But it's been a lot less, and I could have had a lot more. Yeah. And it's bad to think in the past, but it's hard to kind of start your business and then have this kind of major roadblock in your mm-hmm. way. Yeah. But I think everybody ha- is going through the same thing. For sure. Yeah. And if your business can keep going through this pandemic, then you know that people enjoy it enough to keep wanting yeah. the business. So, yeah. yeah. What, what's been your go-to way to overcome roadblocks or failures? I think the best way to get out of kind of a divot or a roadblock is just to get up and start moving. Yeah. And I've, I've heard that, f- I've read that, I've heard that from a lot of, you know, motivational um, authors or speakers that if you're, kind of just depressed and um you're kind of figuring out what you need to do you just have to get up and start doing something yeah that's the first step because if you never do that then you're never going to get anywhere mm-hmm. and so what sometimes i'll be laying on my bed kind of just frustrated mm-hmm. with a project and i just have to tell myself to get up and start working yeah. on it and then usually it just flows yeah and, you'll work right through yeah. it yeah So many of our listeners have said what you said, like if you have an idea, you just got to get started in some way or somehow. Um, I think it's such good advice, but obviously easier said than done for a lot of people. Um, Since you're kind of so new and fresh to doing that yourself, what tips do you have or like things you can do to get started or what helped you to just get started? So I think the number one thing that has helped me specifically in video production, but I think this could apply to any business really, is just doing things for free. And when you do things for free, you show people that you have a service and 
usually you reach out to people you know very well, so like family members or friends, and you ask mm-hmm. them, could I do the service for free or could I make you a video? In my, um, in my stardom, I did weddings for $100, and I did that for a while. Wow. Because I wanted portfolio work. Yeah. And for business videos, like, I did my sister's first videos, and she paid me 100 bucks. And it's not too much, but it's enough to get the ball rolling. Yeah. yeah. But I also had to do a lot of stuff for free, and I still do when I'm trying to start a new project or trying to build a new skill. Mm-hmm. So, like, I've recently gotten into film photography because I love the look of what like film um and i've had to do a lot of photo shoots for free because i want portfolio work yeah Mm -hmm. and so i think that could apply to any business for sure um i think another is just reaching out to someone in that field but someone who is already established Mm -hmm. if you reach out to someone who's starting as well they might get a little defensive right right and not want to help you because they're also doing their own thing yeah but someone who's already established that wants to pass down skills yeah ask them what to do how they started Mm -hmm. and that honestly has helped me a lot um in terms of building kind of my portfolio and and work so yeah yeah Yeah, people definitely be surprised at how many people in an industry want to help another person that wants to be in that industry yep. or is struggling in that industry? Mm-hmm. There's there's a lot of people that would love to just give a little bit of advice or yep. tips and tricks. So. Yep, I agree. And there's also so many resources online. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, YouTube's completely free. <laughs> yeah. There is so much content on yeah. YouTube that can teach you anything. Yeah. Like, if you want to build a business, you know, creating handcrafted tables out of wood. Yeah. Like, there are videos for that. So for look sure. them up and learn. Like, yeah. it's not that hard. Yeah. It just requires a lot of time and dedication. Mm-hmm. And that's what any business requires. Yeah. And in this world, if we want to, you know, like, if we want to work, make money, we have to work for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of what America is about. So... I think you know that like it's really all it takes like uh, time and dedication as long mm-hmm. as you can attribute that to something that you're whether it's a passion or an idea you have anyone can make make a business mm-hmm. work it takes a lot I mean it's it's a lot harder um, right easier said than done yeah right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> but totally time and dedication and I think another thing is just use your skills that you mm-hmm. have yeah if you have a talent or a skill that you can make money off of then start there yeah. and then expand from there. Yeah. That's what I did. And I'm very happy that I did because I think if I were a doctor, I'd probably hate my job. Yeah. <laughs> hate studying. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember who said it. I think a couple people probably said it, but like, don't focus on all the things you're bad at. Find what you're really good at yeah. and try to like, do what you can to perfect that almost. And then obviously throughout time you can take the other things and try to improve them, but focus on your strengths more than your weaknesses. Cause so yeah. many people just think about their weaknesses and just want to get better at that and improve that. But you have strengths for a reason. So you might as well capitalize yeah. on that and yeah, use totally that agree. in some way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the more you focus on like your weaknesses, the more of a battle it's going to be, and <laughs> the more of like the chance that you fail is even greater, which is okay. But just focus on what you're good at. Yeah. And Mark Cuban says, usually if you're good at something, you enjoy doing it. So right. if you find something you're good at, you'll probably find some sort of joy in yeah. being successful at yeah. it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Totally. I, I don't think I've ever met anyone that was like, yeah, I'm good at this, but I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> no. Exactly. Unless it's math. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. A lot of <laughs> people degree. say they hate math, That's but they're true. good at it. But yeah, but they still become like a CPA. Right. Or yeah, like exactly. So. They secretly love it. They just yeah. want to admit it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 What is kind of the goal with Archie Film Co? Do you want to like hire other um, like photographers or videographers, or do you just want to kind of do it yourself? That's a good question. I was hoping you'd ask that. Okay. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but basically, what I imagine for my business is to kind of be more into the wedding industry. Okay. Um, the wedding industry is 
super high pain you mm-hmm. know a lot of people pay good money for weddings because mm-hmm. it's a one in a lifetime experience yeah. but basically what my goal is for um specifically weddings is to be able to kind of create cinematic uh films mm-hmm. um that people watch and are mesmerized by that mm-hmm. they think it's a movie and i think the market now is leaning towards intimate elopement mm-hmm. um uh weddings and i think that's amazing and i'd love to get into that niche market mm-hmm. to be able to film destination slash elopement weddings mm-hmm. because that is beautiful like the yeah. backdrops and um, the places they go are yeah. amazing yeah. and you get to travel and i think everybody has that dream to travel for a living yeah um <laughs> but i think that would be amazing and I plan on kind of sticking to myself yeah. just because it's a lot easier to have creative control. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Once I get cool. older, if I'm still running the business, I plan on probably having uh, training some people, um, not too many, one or two, to yeah. kind of go in my place and maybe keep running the business Right. Um, while I kind of just, sorry, keep filming, kind of working the weddings while I run the business. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of my goal for weddings Sweet. and for corporate commercial videos. I just want to get better at what I do and start working with higher companies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't plan on creating like a huge studio um, yeah. company, but if they want to hire me as a freelancer, uh, freelance videographer, yeah, I'd love to do that. Sweet. So, yeah. Do you ever see yourself venturing into like other businesses or do you, you know, is this like your passion is this what you want to, do the rest of your life so like i thought i wanted to work for like national geographic filming yeah. like wildlife <laughs> yeah i think it would be really cool but once now that i have a taste of what i can do by myself as a business owner i kind of don't want to um my mind might change in a few years if i become tired with what i do or uh-huh. if i um think it's not fulfilling me um emotionally um, I might change paths mm-hmm. and that I have a degree. So mm-hmm. if I need to work for a company, I totally could. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have a lot of portfolio work. So, um, for now, I'm going to stick to weddings and cool. commercial business promo videos. So nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, before we finish up, we got a little game we're going to play with you. Cool. Um, so, so how this is going to go is you have 60 seconds to answer as many questions as possible. Um, we'll just go back and forth. Just rapid fire. It'll be sh- quick answers. Okay. And we'll see how many you can get in. So, Reg, let me know when you're ready. Yeah, like trivia ready. questions? or Just about- like questions about you, like your preferences. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Yeah. okay, you'll start us off okay. in three, two, one. Uh, favorite junk food? Um, Takis. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? Uh, totally teleportation. A music you turn on when nobody is around. EDM music. Uh, if you were stuck on an island, what would you bring? Uh, peanut butter. Favorite quote? My favorite quote is, you miss 100% of the chances that you don't take. Nice. Uh, guilty pleasure? Um, probably playing video games in my uh, free time. <laughs> if you could have dinner with anyone in time, who would it be? Um, that's a hard one. I think... Uh, George Washington. Nice. Uh, best bus- business book you've read? Uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Right. Um, celebrity Crush. Celebrity Crush is a Spanish artist named Rosalia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michael Jordan or LeBron James? Um, LeBron James. Uh, most <laughs> TV show you could turn, you could binge watch. Um, probably Myth Buth- Mythbusters. <laughs> it's an old one, but it's oh, good. Oh, there we go. One. Is All that right. it? Is yeah, that it? Right. that's it. <laughs> we got eleven. Not bad. That's yeah, pretty good. That's pretty yeah. good. Mythbusters. So. I forgot about Mythbusters. Dude, I did too. I used show. to love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're a bit of a gamer. Yeah, I mean, I I don't like to play a lot because I waste a lot of time. Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> at least you recognize. No, that. seriously, it's a huge time waster. But once in a while, I believe that we all need a break. Yeah. And, oh, for sure. Um, I love movies, um, but sometimes. I, my friends, I get to hang out with my friends yeah. um, th- while playing video games. And honestly, yeah. during this pandemic, it's been, you know, like they've encouraged us not to hang out with people. Yeah. 
especially with my friends, they live in a different state. Uh, so if uh, we can maintain kind of our friendship through sure. kind of playing video games or yeah. talking on the phone. Yeah. So we kind of just do that once in a while. Yeah. Um, recently, recently it's been more because it's summer. I'm, I haven't gotten a lot of, uh, I don't have school. Uh, work is a lot less. So yeah. it's just kind of a fun pastime. But yeah. I also... You probably like the graphics Waste a lot of, of time. too. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> Seriously. A lot of them actually have really good storylines. Um, but it's a huge time waster. Yeah. So <laughs> oh, I, I, I hate to waste a lot of time playing. Yeah. So I'll try to limit myself. Yeah. But. Well, I think it's important. Like, I'm not a gamer myself, but yeah. to like, have things that you just enjoy to do, mm-hmm. even if it's yes. not like, you know, promoting your business, just to be able to have some variety in your life and just enjoy yourself sometimes. I know yeah. Ridge is a bit of a closet gamer, but... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> down, down. Nobody yeah. needs to know. I <laughs> you know that on the down Sorry, low. I already exposed myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, and like, it's it's just good to like connect with like friends. Like, yeah. it, even if you're like married or dating someone or whatever it may be, like, just get away from that and just to be with like mm-hmm. the buddies for a little bit yeah, or, just... or with your girlfriends, whatever it may be, and yeah. just like do your thing. Yeah. And I don't know, like, it might be a little bit useless at times, but it's a yeah. way to kind of unwind and disconnect from life a little bit. I just think it's so important to just enjoy yourself sometimes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, totally. I think one of another thing that I've learned as a, a small business owner is that you can't be a hundred percent wrapped up yeah. in your job. You yeah. have to take time. And that's the hardest thing about running your own mm-hmm. business is mm-hmm. you think it's your life Yeah, and you think you should be dedicated to it yeah. all day, every day. But really, normal i mean most of the population work nine to five right right right. and so you should also take time at the beginning of the day at the end of the day or take a break to just you know do your own thing yeah relax spend time with people even play video games or read a book (laughs) or watch a movie you know it's good to stimulate your brain differently right no yeah i think there's two parts of that because like on one hand obviously um, the more hours you put in, the more hours you're going to be ahead of everyone and like the quicker that you can you know, yep. see success in your life and mm-hmm. depending on how you measure success. But it's also just so important to have variety, uh, do things that you enjoy. Um, it's so hard for business owners, I think, because other people are on that nine to five schedule. They can go home and forget about everything, but yep. you're kind of like always on the clock as a business owner. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. I know for me, it can be super tempting to just always be working or something's always going on in my mind about work. But yep. when I can find time to just like let my mind rest and just chill and do something that I enjoy... I think it honestly helps you when you are working on your business to be more focused on it and you're not as drained yeah. when you take time for yourself. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I was talking to a business owner one time and he's really successful at what he does. And he said, work hard, play harder. Mm-hmm. And I really like that. I think he stole that quote from uh, <laughs> Wiz Khalifa. From a is rap that, song? Is that, that, that <laughs> might be where kidding. it came from. <laughs> yeah. He's not the type to listen to that, but yeah. he could be a closet <laughs> yeah. one. So you never know. But cool. I really like it because it's just like, you know, we just need to have fun. Yep. Like life isn't meant to be serious all the time, and yeah. you can have fun in your business too. Mm-hmm. So it's really cool. Cool, man. Well, real good stuff. Um, yeah. As we're kind of closing up here, uh, we know that you have kind of a bit of a special offer for our listeners. So why don't you take a second to let everyone know what that is exactly? Yeah. So um, the Local Hustlers podcast is awesome, and there's a lot of local businesses on here. Um, I'm offering 15% off of any uh, video that any business wants to do with me uh, through this podcast. Um, Just reach out to me on archiefilmco.com and you can tell me that you heard me on the podcast and I'll be able to give you 15% off of um, any of the, any video that we do together, that we film together. And that way we can build each other's brands. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Take business owners. Yeah. Definitely take advantage. It's a sweet offer. Already has great prices and 50% off that is a pretty good deal. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, man, thanks again. Also tell us real Thank quick you. where people can find you. I know you mentioned your website, but where can people find you if they're, they're looking to check you out? Yeah. So Instagram, um, my Instagram is Archie film co at Archie film co Archie is spelled A R C H I E. Um, my Instagram is geared more towards you know weddings and stuff, but mm-hmm. um, I also have some. Um, I post on my stories about my business stuff, and then my website's www.archiefilmco.com. Sweet, and YouTube as well, but not a lot of people use YouTube as a business, you know, tool. So, um, 
yeah, I think that's about it. So nice, man. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I can't wait to see you uh, filming Ridge's wedding here in the near future. <laughs> oh, I hope yeah. so. It's coming up. <laughs> yeah, coming up. Uh, but yeah, thanks again for coming on. We had a good cool. time. Thank you, guys. All right. You guys are awesome. Yeah, All we'll right. catch you next week. All right.